Now, our guest on the market today is Linda Dissel, portfolio manager and market strategist for Federated Investors, where she helps oversee $390 billion in assets. Linda's been in the business for over 26 years, remains bullish on stocks, and advises investors to stay with a cyclical play. Linda, good to have you back with us on Street Smart. Um, I got to start maybe a little bit with the financial stuff, because that's obviously a focal point today. We'll be this week. Reform, what's going on with Goldman. How does all of that kind of factor into your bullish outlook? Well, the financial sector is a very important sector, and we wouldn't want it to fall badly back out of bed again. Uh, obviously, there's uncertainty when they can't close up the books on financial reform, but I think it's just so uh, well discussed. Uh, the, the concerns are just so well discussed that any worries have to be in the market. Um, Goldman as well, you know, however you want to look at that situation and if this is the tip of the iceberg, well, nobody really knows. But when we worry about it and we put it out there so much, um, I think that we forget what we really maybe want to be focused on, which is the earnings trajectory of the S&P 500, and that's where we're feeling really quite bullish. I wonder if you're concerned. You know, we're going to talk with Tom Gallagher from ISI later, and he points out that governments are always uh, getting very involved as the bubble is uh, blowing up, and they always get involved as it bursts as well with legislation and regulation, often uh, making uh, tightening lending standards a little bit. Are you concerned that the regulation that we're looking at being crafted now is going to crimp earnings, corporate earnings in the future? I mean, the new normal was sort of partly about that, right? Do you buy into it? Well, you know, you remember with the Sarbanes-Oxley, too, and all of the concerns that that put down. The concerns about this, I think, will definitely affect certain financial services companies. But when you look at the S&P 500 in a whole, and there are 10 sectors of this, of this economy, I don't see that that's going to really affect other areas of the economy unless we get to a place where we just see more and more and more financial regulation, or excuse me, regulation in general by the government, um, big government, that sort of thing. And for that, we get to look forward to the midterm elections. There's all kinds of juries still out on that. You know, Linda, you are saying, I'm just looking at my notes here, that the U.S. stock market could ultimately be one of the best performing in the world by the end of the year. So is it just because the growth is much better over here and we're, we seem to be resolving a lot of the issues? Yes, it is. And you know, I, I travel so much in my job, and I meet so many people, financial advisors and investors alike, and I just see so much worry out there. So many people thinking, well, the emerging markets are so much better than what we are. Look at the problems with Europe, and look at what's happening to the euro. Look at the value of the U.S. dollar going up. Remember that last year we were up, I think, 26% on the S&P and still one of the worst performers among the various indices out there. I think it would surprise a lot of people probably to know that right now the USA is way up there. And when we looked at the OECD composite index, who was the leader? It was the USA. We're having a V-shaped recovery. It's good. It's all good. I wonder, do you think that equity investors, that mom and pop investors are going to come back because they have missed out on this rally, right? It's been mostly the institutional money uh, riding up this 80% rally from the March lows. Do you expect uh, that cash on the sidelines that we always continue to talk about to come in anytime soon? Uh, I don't know about any time soon, but I really feel like it will come to pass. I think it gets more and more painful. Uh, that sort of a euphoria uh, is what we really need to see. I think the final market melt up. For us, we look at fundamentals and we say fundamentally, I can justify S&P 1350 may be even better as we make our way through this year. Just the fact that they're on, on the sidelines, they get to a point where they say to their advisors, I can't believe you've kept me so conservatively positioned. That's when we're going to start saying maybe we should start looking and be more conservative you know, ourselves. Linda, I want to go back to you said it's all good. You were, you know, very enthusiastic. It's not so good for those who are still unemployed. We're just below 10 percent. It's a tough unemployment rate out there. There's still a lot of deficit out there, whether it's at the state or the federal level. I mean, so it's not all good. Well, sorry, you're right. It's not all good. And of course, there'll always be people unemployed. Um, we're thinking that not the unemployment 10%. situation... That the unemployment situation has maybe peaked out. But here's something else I think that most people don't appreciate. We worry about the consumer. We worry about housing. But you know what? It's, it's not a consumer-led recovery. It is a business-led recovery. And we can worry about the fate of, uh, of our fellow Americans that are unemployed and actually still invest to make money in the stock market. It's okay to do that. And I think that that's what's going to really surprise people as we make our way through this year. We could still have reasonably uh, high unemployment. We could potentially, and we're already seeing 
seeing it, some better retail sales numbers. Why? Because it's the wealthiest among us that swing consumer spending, and those people are feeling much better. And the unemployment rate among the wealthiest, uh, the wealthier people is much lower than it is among the uh, lower income groups. All right. Hey, Linda, thanks so much for joining us. Linda Dissel there from Federated Investors in Pittsburgh.